Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Green Bay Packers 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. So in this video, we are going to go over every single Packers pick, and we're going to look at them through the eyes of production and athleticism data. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description, but this video is essentially going to look at how these guys look on paper and how they compare to successful outcomes or successful players in previous draft classes in the past. Um, some of the data goes back to the 90s, some of the data goes back to the 80s, and some of the data goes as far back as the 50s. At least, uh, I don't think the Green Bay Packers drafted any quarterbacks, but a lot of the data does go pretty far back. So again, we're, we're basically looking at what type of traits did special players in the past have, and do any of the Packers players they drafted have those traits? Um, so that's what the video is going to entail. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the draft class. So first off, you have Jari Alexander, uh, the cornerback out of Louisville. Uh, when you look at his production data, and I've done a video on him in the past, uh, by the way, and, and probably some of you have already seen that video, but uh, this is kind of a repeat of that. Uh, had a 47.53 solo tackle score, 69.65 pass flexion score. Uh, when you look at him, his only big issue is his solo tackle data um, and, uh, you know, doesn't quite hit the average solo tackle score of a Pro Bowl player, but definitely has pretty close to the average score of a Pro Bowl player when it comes to pass deflection data. But the reason why he drafted him is because of his athleticism traits. 81.58 in terms of explosiveness, 95.52 in terms of speed, and 98.59 in terms of flexibility. Essentially has all pro level athleticism traits. Uh, when you look at it through the eyes of the data and doesn't quite have the potential to be an all pro player because he doesn't hit at least the minimum so uh, solo tackle score for an all pro potential player but does hit at least the pro bowl level and i think that's what you're looking at when you look at alexander you're looking at a guy that has a very good shot to become a pro bowl cornerback to long-term starting quarterback um, but someone that doesn't quite have elite elite upside so that's the only thing that's kind of wrong with Alexander. But there were very, very few cornerbacks. Actually, there were no cornerbacks in this draft class that had, you know, all pro level um, upside when you look at the overall data. So uh, but bottom line is you did get one of the better cornerbacks in this draft class just from an athleticism standpoint and overall production standpoint. Then, of course, you get to Joshua Jackson, a cornerback out of Iowa. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 62.20 solo tackle score and an 88.86 pass deflection score. Uh, pretty much is a cornerback that has all pro potential based on his uh, production traits and uh, has above the average pass deflection score for all pro and pro bowl potential. Um, the only question mark with him is athleticism traits to a certain extent. Only had a, had a 80.19 explosive or body strength score, 40.14 speed score, and 79.40 uh, flexibility score. In order to become an all pro cornerback, he would have to become somewhat of an outlier uh, to become that type of player. But I do think when you look at his overall data, you look at his production data, you look at his athleticism traits, I do think you're looking at a cornerback that has a very good shot to become a long-term starter and someone that has potential to be even better than that, like a potential Pro Bowl player if he ends up in the right system. And then, of course, we get to Oren Burks, linebacker out of Vanderbilt. Um, when you look at his production data, he had a 60.64 solo tackle score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold of 90 or the Pro Bowl threshold of 77, but does hit at least above the starter threshold of 20.5. Uh, when you look at the starter averages, that's the only area, only area where he runs into a couple question marks because the average production score for a starter is 79.20, and he only has 60.64. But the reason why he drafted him, I think, is because of athleticism traits, 91.40 in terms of explosiveness, 71.65 in terms of speed and 90.23 in terms of flexibility. In many ways, he has Pro Bowl athleticism traits, but just doesn't have Pro Bowl production. So I think in many ways, Oren Burks has a good chance to become a long-term starter, but I think it's less likely that he becomes a elite, elite linebacker because of some of his production issues. Then, of course, you get to Javon Moore, wide receiver out of Missouri. I mean, look at his production data at 58.52, passing yards, market share, production score, which hits at least... The long-term starter threshold doesn't hit the three-time Pro Bowl threshold, three-time All-Pro threshold, or five-time All-Pro threshold, but does hit at least the long-term starter threshold. And when you look at the averages at the position, this is the only area where there is some question marks. Doesn't quite hit near the average All-Pro score, the average Pro Bowl score, even the average starter score. He's about 20 points away from the average 
starter score. And this is based since every single wide receiver since the 1969 NFL draft class. So there are some question marks in terms of his uh, production. And then when he gets his athleticism traits, he had a 71.84 explosive score, a 33.06 speed score, and a 17.91 flexibility score. Um, every single multiple all pro slash pro bowl wide receiver since 1999, at least the vast majority of them, had at least one 54 or higher athleticism trait. Jamon Moore has one. So in many ways, he does have all pro slash pro bowl potential based on his athleticism. It's just his production doesn't quite have all pro slash pro bowl potential. I think the best case scenario with Jamon Moore is that he could become a long-term starting wide receiver, but he's not someone that I think has a very good shot of becoming a high quality wide receiver. Then of course you get to Cole Madison, offensive guard out of Washington State. When you get to his athleticism traits, he had a 44.81 explosive lower body strength score, 40.59 speed score, and 42.08 flexibility score. Um, does not quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold in terms of athleticism traits, but does hit at least above the starter threshold. The only real issue is when you look at the averages of the position, this is where the problem lies, is that he, he's really below average in terms of his athleticism traits. So most all-pro guards, pro bowl guards, and even starter guards have above average athleticism traits, like significantly above average athleticism traits in certain sets, and Cole Madison is not close to that. So Although Cole Madison has some shot or some ability to potentially become a long-term starting guard because he, he didn't hit below the bottom and thresholds at the position, there's still a high unlikelihood that he becomes a starter because of just how below average his overall athleticism is. So we'll see what happens with Cole Madison, but it's very likely that he might be at best a backup in terms of his career in, on the uh, Packers. Of course, you get to J.K. Scott, puncher out of Alabama. Uh, when you look at his punting production score, he had a 98.70 since the 2001 um, college season. So very, very good punter. This is all the data I really have when it comes to punters is just what the production score was. There's other sort of variables that I haven't really tested yet at the position, but at least you know that you're getting a pretty productive punter and we'll see what happens with him as well. Then of course you get to Marquez Scantling Valdez, wide receiver out of South Florida. Um, similar issue to Jamon Moore, production is hits at least the long-term starter threshold, but when you look at the averages at the position, just really below average. So again, very unlikely that he becomes a long-term starter. He does hit at least the bottom and threshold, so he has somewhat of a shot. But again, you, you typically want wide receivers to have 81. You know, you want him to be in that sort of area in terms of production, and he's just not quite there. Um, but I think the main reason you drafted him though is because of athleticism traits. Um, 25.38 in terms of explosiveness, 88.72 in terms of speed, and 81.84 in terms of flexibility for his size. So he is much more athletic than Jamon Moore. But again, I do think there are some question marks because of his production data. So he could end up becoming a long-term starter, but he also could end up becoming just a backup because of his production data. Then, of course, we get to uh, St. Brown, wide receiver out of Notre Dame. Uh, when you get to his athleticism traits, he only has one athleticism trait in terms of 71.35 out of 100. Um, didn't do the all the things he needed to do in terms of his explosion testing or his flexibility testing. But he does have at least one above average athleticism trait, which is all you really need to become a high quality player. And when it comes to his production data, he was the only, one of the few wide receivers in this draft class the Packers drafted who had above the three-time Pro Bowl threshold, uh, basically. Uh, you know, the three-time Pro Bowl threshold of 68, and he had a 73.87. Still not quite at the average starter score, but definitely not too far away from that. And I think that there is a good chance that St. Brown will most likely be the best wide receiver from this draft class when you look at it from a production standpoint, at least having one high-quality athleticism trait. Then, of course, you get to James Looney, defensive tackle out of California. Uh, when you get to his production data, he had a 44.94 solo tackle score, 53.31 sack score, and 81.81 tackle for loss score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold uh, or the Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to his solo tackle data. Does quite kind of look like a starter in terms of the starter thresholds at the position. When you look at the averages at the position, this is where he runs into a couple issues. Below what the average is in terms of a starter, in terms of solo tackle data, and below what the average is in terms of a um, starter, in terms of sack data as well. Um, so he just has some issues in terms of his solo tackle data and his sack data, but did test pretty well as an athlete. 87.19 in terms of explosiveness, 78.22 in terms of speed, and 90.16 in terms of flexibility for his size. So James Looney has the potential to become a long-term starting defensive tackle, 
but there are some question marks because he is below what the average is in terms of starting defensive tackles when it comes to solo tackle data and when it comes to sack data. Then, of course, we get to Hunter Bradley, long snapper out of Mississippi State. I do not do long snapper analytics or data, so I really can't say much about this pick other than you drafted a long snapper. And then the last player that the Packers drafted was Kendall Donerson Edge out of Southeast Missouri. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, 95.83 in terms of explosiveness, 99 in terms of speed, and 89.50 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size. He essentially has... All pro level athleticism traits. In terms of his production at his level of competition, you know, we really don't know a ton about that information, uh, only because, again, most of the production models I have compare FBS production to FBS production. So it wouldn't be very prudent to take FCS production or lower level division production and compare it to FBS production to make predictions. Um, it would be better if you had a larger sample size at the FCS level and compare that to what other players that were successful from the FCS level typically did. And I don't have a large enough sample size to do that, so all we're going off of is athleticism traits. But the bottom line is, Kendall Donerson does look pretty decent from an athleticism standpoint and could end up becoming a long-term starter or better if he develops on the Packers. So overall, when you look at the Green Bay Packers draft class, I think this is a pretty solid uh, draft class for the most part. I think when you look at the... The top three picks in particular, you know, you look at uh, Alexander, you look at Joshua Jackson. Those are two guys that I think can become long-term starters. And they were um, part of the top five best testing quarterbacks in this draft class based on data. So I think there's a very good shot that both those guys end up becoming long-term starters or better. Uh, I think wide receiver-wise, you are taking a bit of a gamble with all three of these wide receivers. But I do think that at least one of them will pay off. Um, whether that's St. Brown, who would be the guy I would have most of my money on to pay off. I think J.K. Scott is a pretty decent production guy when it comes to his testing. There's a couple picks that, that are not that great. Cole Madison is one of those, for example. Um, James Looney, there's a couple question marks in terms of his production data. But I do think that this is a pretty solid class. I do think there's a lot of potential that there's going to be some su successful players from this class. I just don't think that you're going to hit every single pick out of the park, and no team usually does. Bottom line, though, I do like this class, but there are a couple question marks in terms of a couple picks here and there. Um, and, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace! Thank <laughs> you.